Today's video is brought to you by Factor. Stick around to learn more about their delicious and healthy meals. When it comes to Starfield, you are your own worst enemy. That's a fact. Whether it's not preparing for a fight or simply not knowing what to do next, it's easy to get lost in the void that is space. My name is Cody Yak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're sharing our step-by-step -step guide to take you from fledgling explorer to overpowered Lord of the Stars. There are a million tips and tricks videos flying around. Too many, in my opinion. There are a ton of great creators making great content that'll help you in a specific scenario. But as far as we can tell, no one has helped connect all of those dots and put together a video that will put you on a path for success until today. Between myself, Livid, and Schmo, we've put in over 300 hours with Starfield, and we think we have a really firm handle on how best to guide you through the early and mid game. Remember, Starfield is massive, and while this is a linear guide, you can, at any point in time, do something entirely different. It's all about player choice. A word of warning as far as New Game Plus is concerned, while we won't go into any specific details on the story, completing the main quest, or what happens after, we wanted to warn you that stepping into New Game Plus will leave you naked and afraid once again. If you are a player looking to do everything the game has to offer, waiting to complete the main campaign is probably in your best interest, as you're looking at a near-complete wipe of your progression if you venture into a new playthrough. That being said, we are getting ahead of ourselves. New Game Plus is in the future, and we are here to talk about the now. So strap in, and let's take to the stars. It makes sense to talk quickly about skills first. Before you do anything in the game, you're going to have to go through a few introductory quests, and throughout each step of your progression through this guide, you'll gain skill points. The headline? Don't waste these on skills that won't be immediately valuable to you. You have to think about the here and now, as well as the near future, and if you pick skills that are aimed towards the end game, well then you'll have a harder time catching back up. We do have a full video breaking down each skill tree, as well as our personal favorite picks in each category, but to give you a snapshot, I think it's safe to say these are a few solid early game picks. Weightlifting, so you can carry extra loot. Stealth, so you can be sneaky sneaky. Theft, so you can take advantage of being sneaky sneaky. Commerce, so your buy and sell rates are better. A combat skill that matches your playstyle and weapon choice, more on this in a bit. Research method for its unique perk, sudden development. Boost pack training for easier traversal. Security, so you gain access to even more loot. And targeting control systems, so you can disable and ultimately steal ships. It sounds like a lot, but all of this will come in handy as we work through each step of this guide. Remember, we're not saying you need to get everything at once, but the skills I outlined all feed into the overall process of getting OP quickly. Once the Great Beyond opens up, it's hard, almost impossible really, to figure out what to do first. Do you tackle the main story, maybe join a faction, or better yet, start tweaking your spaceship? All of these are great, but in order to get OP early, we really need to do a little legwork and set ourselves up for success. Enter the Mission Board, a great little kiosk that offers up some simple quests in exchange for credits. It can seem mundane, but each of these quests will reward you with a few thousand credits, and at this point in the game, that's quite the windfall. The real goal here is to scrap together enough coin to buy yourself a new weapon. But not just any old weapon, something special. Something that'll last, something unique. A quick note about the Mission Board, you can find these in most major cities, or even craft one to place in your outpost. For example, there's one in New Atlantis right inside the viewport off to the left side of the main drag when you first start walking into the city. Likewise, there's a terminal specifically for the Freestar Collective inside the rock in Aquila City, up the stairs against the right side of the wall. For now, the main mission board will do just fine. Grab any and all missions and knock them out one after the other. To refresh the board, simply leave the galaxy and come back, or wait 24 hours, which will trigger a refresh. Do enough missions until you're close to 30,000 credits, and you can move on to the next step. With credits in hand, it's time to pick up that unique weapon I mentioned earlier. Lucky for you, vendors all around the Settled Systems have one or two special items worth picking up. What you choose really depends on your playstyle, so I'll let you make the decision here, but here are a few weapons you might be interested in. In the residential district of New Atlantis is Centurion Arsenal. Inside, at the vendor, you can pick up the Marksman's AA-99. This technically isn't a unique weapon, but it's damn powerful, providing you with deadly long-range effectiveness right out of the gate. If you're more of a shotgun player, you can head down to the Commercial District and stop into the UC Distribution Center. 
There, you can purchase the Rapid Shot, a powerful early game shotgun that can clear most points of interest with ease. If you're looking for something a little more sophisticated, you can head to Aquila City and the weapon vendor there. She'll sell you a neat little pistol called Elegance, which really does live up to the name. It's a burst shot weapon with insane armor pen and a suppressor. Go figure. If you're willing to head to the volley system and touchdown in Neon, you can pick up three other options. The Boom Boom is sold at Neon Tactical and features a large magazine, high damaging rounds, and is a decent option if accuracy really isn't your thing. The same vendor will also sell you the Buzz Cut, which I'll admit I've never purchased, mainly because it's built off the Grendel platform, which I don't particularly like. There's also another option, the Spacer, which can be purchased from the Arboron vendor at the end of the main street. This weapon deals both physical and energy damage, has a load of mods, and deals increased damage while in space, but reduced damage while on the surface. Even still, it's a solid weapon. Those are just a few options, and really any arms vendor you meet at any major city or hub will have at least one unique weapon. The choice is up to you, and just like a parent giving their child an allowance, what you choose to do with your credits falls squarely on you. Remember, we need to draw a line between the weapons we choose and any combat skills we pick up, so if you choose something like ballistics as a skill upgrade, you might want to choose something that deals physical damage. Connecting those dots is going to make for a much smoother gameplay experience early on. With your first unique weapon in hand, it's time to head out into space and stir up some trouble. We recommend heading to the Altair system. As soon as you jump in, you'll receive a quest called Ground Pounder, which will take you down to the surface of one of the system's planets. This is a long quest chain that will have you helping both the UC and Freestar Collective fend off attacks from the spacers. Not only is this quest line a great way to gain some XP, but the base you liberate is chock full of loot, and at the end, you'll be able to loot one of those hexagonal loot chests that offers up some of the game's best rewards. If you beeline it through the entire quest, skipping all the dialogue, you can probably get through this in 30 minutes or less. But if you take your time and loot everything, which we recommend, you're looking at substantially longer. It's a huge facility with a load of enemies, and you'll want to check every corpse along the way, so take your time. Once you complete the quest, you'll be rewarded with an additional item, a unique rifle, the Peacekeeper. This thing will keep you going for a healthy portion of the game, and is easily one of the best weapons you can get your hands on early on in your progression. If you were looking for a reliable Starfield AR, the Peacekeeper is the gun for you. Check it out guys, today's video has been made possible thanks to Factor. If you don't know about Factor, you should, because they're delivering fresh, never frozen meals right to your doorstep. I'm not gonna lie, as a dad of a toddler balancing a job and running the channel, I don't usually have time for lunch, but with Factor, I've got a healthy meal ready to eat in two minutes flat. What honestly blew me away about the food was how many options there are to choose from. Over 34 weekly meals that you can pick based on what you like to eat. You've got keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, vegan, and veggie options. There is something for everyone here. One of my favorite meals is the peanut Buddha bowl, which combines sweet potatoes, red and green bell peppers, quinoa, all tossed together with a house-made peanut sauce. Delicious. No more grocery shopping, no more thinking about what I need to make. I just pick a meal, pop it in the microwave, and ding, ready to eat. If you're sick of that boring lunchtime routine, then head to factor75.com or click the link below and use the code LEGACY50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Hopefully, luck is on your side as you're killing spacers during that ground pounder mission, and you'll have picked up the slate titled Secret Outpost. As soon as you pick up the data slate, a new quest will populate your log called the Mantis. This is an early game secret that we recommend everyone do as soon as humanly possible, and if you followed all of our steps up until this point, it should be easy to pull off. The Mantis quest line isn't long, but it does require some combat and some problem solving, nothing you can't handle. If you want a full rundown of that quest, check out our recently released video. It breaks down everything you need to know, including how to beat the floor puzzle. If you manage to get through the hideout, you'll be rewarded with a full set of Mantis armor, including a spacesuit and helmet. If you save right before opening the case and interacting with the armor, you can loot it, check what bonuses it rolled with, and if you don't like them, load back in from your quick save and loot the armor again until you're happy with the bonuses. You'll also unlock the Razor Leap, a brand new ship leagues better than that of the Frontier. To say this thing carried me through a good chunk of the game would be a wild understatement. There's a reason everyone is talking about this quest, because the rewards are that freaking good. Now, if you didn't get the Mantis quest to trigger during Ground Pounder, don't sweat it. Just go clear a few points of interest on any early game planet, and I guarantee it'll drop after just a little time. 
it's an early game drop, and I've yet to run across anyone who didn't get it during their first few hours of a playthrough. So after saving some civvies and claiming the secrets of the Mantis, it's time to turn to a life of crime. What a character arc. That's right, we're joining the ranks of the Crimson Fleet, and for good reason, because a life of piracy pays handsomely. To trigger the start of this quest line, we first need to get caught breaking the law in UC space. This is most easily accomplished in New Atlantis by simply stealing a bunch of stuff in a shop until the security forces take you away. You'll be rerouted to the UC Vigilance, the UC Sysdef command ship, and will be tasked with infiltrating and stopping the Crimson Fleet. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. Consider this your jumping off point into the rest of the game because for the next couple hours, few days, however long it takes you to complete this quest line, you are in it. Work through the Crimson Fleet arc until you complete the Echoes of the Past mission. This will reward you with the Keel Hauler, a legendary pistol with some decent mods and a few passive bonuses. However, that's not our ultimate prize. During the mission, Eye of the Storm, you'll have one opportunity and one opportunity alone to pick up arguably the best weapon in the game, the Revenant. During the objective, locate the Vault Control Center, you'll enter, get this, a control center. Sitting there on the desk is this unique firearm juiced out to the max. Words really don't do this gun justice, so be sure to pick this item up when you have a chance because once the quest is over, that's it. Window of opportunity gone. With two legendary guns and a load of quests under your belt, finish up the Crimson Fleet storyline and you'll be rewarded with 250,000 credits as well as a free ship. In all honesty, this thing really doesn't hold a candle to the Razor Leaf, but with the right modifications, you can make practically anything a good ship. The last step to truly setting yourself up for success in Starfield is to build a base of operations. Look, I get it, outposts aren't for everyone, but the truth is, if you ignore this aspect of the game, you're just going to be missing out on a singular place to gain resources and tweak your gear to their maximum potential. There are other ways to achieve these goals, but setting up a simple outpost is a practical option. If you set up shop early, you have a lockdown location where you can store gear and organize your inventory, which can be a huge burden later on if you don't have the right ship and or skills. To do this, however, there are a few key factors you need to consider. First, you want to locate a planet that has a breathable atmosphere and hospitable environment. Additionally, ensure that the planet has flora and fauna. This will eventually feed into the greenhouse and animal husbandry systems down the line and will be monumental in automating organic resources. Without flora and fauna present on the planet, you won't even be able to build the necessary structures. On top of this, you'll also want to scan numerous planetary bodies and look out for a mineral-rich planet or moon. Some of the most important resources in the game are aluminum, iron, copper, and nickel, but we'd also consider helium-3, chlorosolanus, and alkanes also worth mentioning. Once you've found the right planet, you'll need to land in the right area. Take your time and find a location where the most important resources converge. Touching down on the planet's surface and doing a bit of exploration with your hand scanner will allow you to see the areas where you can set up extractors. Ensuring multiple resource zones falls within your outpost beacon's radius is probably the best outpost tip we can give to new players because eventually those zones will result in tons of raw materials, all of which are automatically harvested. We mentioned aluminum before and for good reason. It's used in just about everything and is even a foundational resource when it comes to manufactured components. Without a steady flow coming into your base, you'll quickly run into roadblocks, so again, preparation is key. With a small outpost up and running, you can begin to set up some storage containers and most importantly, add all of the crafting stations you'll need to modify your gear. What you've collected up until this point is great and will continue to carry you throughout the game, but with a small outpost up and running, you'll quickly be able to adjust to any and all situations. I do recommend keeping an eye on the channel because we're hard at work putting together a comprehensive outpost guide. There is so much the game doesn't tell you, and it can be frustrating for new players, so be on the lookout for that video. If you followed this guide, you're no doubt ready to tackle anything and everything Starfield can throw at you. Again, this is a path we recommend taking if you want to gain an advantage in the game, but it's by no means the end-all be-all. Starfield is all about forging your own path, but we realize a fair number of players enjoy a little guidance, which is why getting OP is now within your grasp. Friends, we hope this video was helpful. If you know any way we can make this guide even better, feel free to let us know in the comments down below. As always, we're here to have a great time playing games we enjoy while also helping out our community. So don't be shy. If you think you can make this guide even better, we wanna hear from you. 
Of course, you can also join us on Discord if you want to talk about new and upcoming games, interact with the Legacy team, and enter daily giveaways for your chance at awesome prizes. That link, as always, is below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.